What have you seen in terms of U.S. bridge projects and their development vis-a-vis -vis the Buy America legislation? It's been a battle for a long time that there's always surges of potential import competition that come in with attractive pricing on the surface. They're basically talking about an initial price, which is tempting to a DOT or an owner's agency trying to tell their people, well, maybe we can save a little money doing this. The Buy America regulations, however, are quite strict. They provide threshold values that unless the savings are this, you need to procure this domestically to maintain not only our infrastructure, but to maintain the factories and the skill sets of our people and our workers so that we're prepared in the case of a calamity or a rapid project, that we have the skill sets we need to also repair our own infrastructure. If we continue to outsource it, we will lose that capability. Can you walk us through the cycle of how these projects come to fruition and where in the process the actual outsourcing function is added? Most of the projects are funded by federal dollars and have been. It's one of the biggest outlays of the federal government for construction is in the surface transportation and roads and bridges. So Congress passes a bill, hopefully in a timely manner, and replaces it that provides some level of funding. And then there's formulas that distribute the funding down to the state. So the state will then take their list of projects, take the funds they have, match the two together and say, these are the most critical projects, these are the ones we want to build. You've got the federal piece, you've got the state match. Some of our roads and bridges are toll bridges, so they've got toll authority funds. But at some point, it appears that the cost and the construction cost may not be in balance, or there's this attractive offer, geez, if you do this portion and outsource it overseas, we can save money, which will bring it, and that starts the temptation, which then leads to how can we get around the federal regulations? How can we keep the federal dollars but use them differently? And that's where it starts. It's usually on the large projects. Sometimes it can be on the small projects, but it's usually a case where at some point in time you've seen an apparent cost crunch and this appears to be the easy fix. Has the public been fully informed as to how these projects are actually delivered? The public hears what the agencies want them to hear. And the one that has been in the news over and over again this past summer has been the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge. Well, here we have a project that first said we have a deficiency when it lost part of one section in the Loma Prieta earthquake in 1989. And in 2012, we still haven't replaced it. But we have an agency that's basically saying we did everything right. We saved money by outsourcing this major piece to China. But in all the articles I've read, in all the news interviews I've seen, I haven't heard them once say, and our construction costs are $290 million more than the initial contract, nor have I seen that we've already granted 20 months of time extensions to this contractor. So they will tell about the savings they thought they made when they made the initial procurement, but they are not telling the public that they continue to approve change orders, they continue to approve time extensions. So what is the real savings? And I think really anybody that wants to do an economic analysis, construction cost is one thing, but then you also have the multiplier effect of the wages if they stay in the United States, then we also collect income taxes, state collect taxes, workers go home, buy groceries, pay sales taxes, huge multiplier effects on dollars that are spent in the United States. Once they go overseas, they're gone forever.